This is a short video on using the PSX-AR auto reverser with a Digitrack system, specifically a DCES 52. I have uh, used this auto reverser and I like it very well. I've tried a couple of others and this one works flawlessly, but it does take uh, some setting up with a Digitrack system and I put together a set of rules here to make it easier for everyone and hopefully that'll help. I want to give a shout out to Larry Meyer who's the designer from DCC Specialties who uh, helped me quite a bit in getting this set up for Digitrax and uh, with multiple e emails back and forth over a month uh, we finally got uh, everything to work correctly. So let's get started. This is a picture of the uh, PSXAR Auto Reverser. Uh, it's a very simple uh, configuration to hook up. There's two terminals on the left and there's a two terminal strip on the right. The two terminals on the left connect to the DCC booster. Uh, in my case, uh, that's a Digitrax DCS52. I don't have another external booster. The booster is built into the uh, DCS52. So the left hand side connects to the power from the booster and the right hand side the two terminals connect to the loop. There's also a note you can see here at the bottom which talks about the uh, setting up the system to work with Digitrax and how you can optimize it. And that's pretty simple to do. You just uh, install a, a wire jumper, physical wire jumper and um, then set the program um, jumper to program it and you're all set. Uh, the instructions are in the manual uh, and once this is done you don't have to do it again. It's a one-time shot. Okay, let's take a look at uh, rule number one. Rule number one says you cannot use a loop as part of a common layout configuration. For example, on the left, um, my system has four or five blocks, and one rail for each block is tied to a common to reduce the number of wires, and the other uh, rail is connected to power. So it states in the in the book, although it's it's buried there a little bit uh, in the instruction manual, the loop cannot be part of the common wiring for the layout. Over here, you can see the loop has got to be completely isolated from the rest of the layout. Uh, just for discussion purposes, the left side, which can be part of a common circuit, is called the normal side, and the loop side, or the reverse loop, is called the loop side. So that's the first rule. If you don't uh, follow this rule, uh, you're not going to get to first base real, real quickly. I, I have tried it both ways, and it sometimes works, with uh, the loop being part of the common circuit, but most often it doesn't work. So if you follow this rule, you should be all set. Rule number two, keep the transition point between the loop feed and the normal feed away from the frog points. So what do I mean by that? <clears throat> Here's the uh, turnout. These are the frog legs of the turnout. I have a double insulated gap here and another one about a foot away. Same on the other leg of the turnout. One here and one here. The green dots represent the power coming from the normal side of the layout and the blue dots represent the feed coming from the output of the auto reverser. So you can see here that the transition occurs away from the frog points at this double insulated gap between the power from the normal feed and the loop feed. Same here. Transition is here, about a foot away. These uh, these double insulated gaps are about a foot away, uh, which is not it's not that critical. But at any rate, whatever direction they're going in, the transition occurs here, away from the frog points, and it works pretty well. Rule number three: the longest train must fit within the loop if there are all metal wheels. The reason for that is that you could have the front end of the loco at at uh, this end of uh, this part of the transition and you could have the rear end at this transition point here. So 
the auto reverser gets confused when it sees a short at both sides and doesn't know what to do. Um, as I would get confused as well. So uh, if you have a, a train with all metal wheels, you have to take that in consideration. If you just have uh, uh, all plastic wheel sets, uh, then just the loco's got to fit in the loop. So that's not that's not a big deal. Okay, rule number four: trip currents. Now the DCS says it can control 20 locos at one time. However, it only can support or supply 3 amps of current. So in my case, I have an N-scale layout. Uh, if each, each loco is half an amp, that's only 6 locos. And for HO, it's got to be less, right? Um, because they take more current, I would think. Um, so the problem is that the auto reverse that comes from the factory configured to trip at 3.8 amps. Well, if the DCS-52 can only supply 3 amps, the auto reverser will never see a short uh, of 3.8 amps or more, and it'll never reverse the, the loop voltage, so it won't work. Um, so, what's the solution to this? In order for the auto reverser to reverse, we reduce the trip current of the auto reverser to 1.27 amps. The way we do that is we put a physical jumper between terminals 1 and 2 on J6. And that'll reduce the trip current to 1.27 amps. You can go anywhere from 1.27 amps, depending on the jumpers, up to 19 amps uh, trip current. Uh, you can also do this in software. But from my perspective, it's easy just to throw a, a physical jumper across uh, J6 on those two terminals, 1 and 2, and that solved the problem. Okay, rule number five, trip timing. Uh, again, the auto reverser comes from the factory configured to trip like a fast blow fuse. Uh, as soon as the short is detected, uh, the auto reverser will switch the loop voltage to reverse. Uh, if it thinks that solved the problem, the output will stay on. If it did not solve the problem, the output will shut down. Unfortunately, that's what happens because the DCS-52 thinks there's a short and trips first and the auto reverser thinks it didn't solve the problem and it shuts off the output. So this causes a symptom of when the loco goes across the transition point, it stalls and then starts up again, or it stalls and stays stalled, basically turns off. Uh, and that happens at the transition points from going from normal to loop or vice versa. So how do we fix this? Uh, there's a, a set of configuration variables that you can program into the PSXAR with it and program it for a delay. You use CV configuration variable 55 and CV 65. For digit tracks, I used CV 55 equals 1, which means use the delay set in CV 65, which is I set for 200. Now, it might work for 150, 128, 200 work for me. The values can be anywhere from 0 to 255. The default is 0. Uh, one thing you, you've got to remember here is that uh, we're programming, when you do this, it says to program it on the main. Uh, that means that if you've got a loco set up with a certain number that you uh, have defaulted to or set on the DCS-52, then it will change the CV-55 and 65 configuration variables on every loco that has that uh, loco number on your, your uh, layout. So the easiest thing to do, I guess, is to take all the locos off the off the main off the the layout while you're doing this, or uh, initially set a loco number that you're not using. Like I use eight 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 nine, which I don't have any locomotive with that number, and then I set the the configuration variables and I don't have a problem. But remember, either take off the locos off the off the layout or set a loco number first before you set the configuration variables. Otherwise, you could be changing some CVs in the locos. Also, when we talk about the PSX circuit breakers, which is kind of a subset of the auto reverser, they need to have the same CV set. Okay? Next, there's a thing called auto reset. The auto reverser and the PSX circuit breaker both come from the factory configured to auto reset. What does that mean? If it detects a short, it'll shut off the output for two seconds and then try to reset itself again. 
it'll keep doing this until the short is cleared. So I don't know about you, but it probably would take me more than two seconds to clear a, a fault on the layout. So I I uh, set it. I configured it, which is um, which is possible in the auto reverse, to a hundred seconds before it tries to reset. But I started thinking about that, and I said, you know, is that long enough for me to clear find a fault and clear it? Or is it too long? And I could clear it right away and have to wait over a minute and a half for it to reset itself. Um, you know, so I, I thought the easiest way to do this is to use a normally closed switch to manually reset the device when you want to. Uh, I wired the switch, as it says in the instructions, from uh, terminals 1 and 2 on terminal strip J7. When you do that in the, in the product trips, It'll stay tripped, and it'll only reset after you press the button. So that way you don't have to have it keep auto-resetting every two seconds or waiting a long time. Okay, uh, using the PSX with the auto-reverse of PSX-AR. Basically, the PSX-AR is a auto-reverser with a PSX stuck on the output. The way you daisy-chain them with power, down below here, it's DCC booster, all the power is basically daisy-chained uh, in parallel. Uh, the thing you have to remember is, on Zone 1, if you hook it up this way, this is normal Zone 1, the normal part of your lay layout that's Zone 1. The reverse Zone 1, this is the loop output that goes to Zone 1. So this protects, this PSX protects the zone, normal Zone normal part of the zone one and the auto reverser here protects the loop part of zone one okay and all of the same settings to the PSX are applied to the PSX that we've been talking about so whatever you do for one you do for the other because it's basically the same thing okay next this is an example of my layout it looks a little complicated and it is but it works now. Everything in blue shaded that you see here is, in fact, um, the normal side of the zone um, of, of block three. The left side is the loop side, the isolated loop side. And you can see here are the double insulated gaps I talked about and the transition point. And same here on this leg of the frog. And then everything over here to the left is all loop and the way the power is hooked up the booster goes to the input of the PSX AR right here the output goes from here to the isolated part and I just have multiple uh, feeds feeder drops just to keep the voltage up uh, and then the booster also goes to the PSX circuit breakers right here to feed block one block two block three and I made a note for myself down here to set CV55 to 1 and CV65 to 200 so I don't forget. Um, that's kind of it. Uh, everything's been working great, but uh, it's not, a, as I said, a trivial setup. You have to think about these things. Uh, but it does work if you follow these rules. Um, so if you like this video, please subscribe and hit the like button. And uh, thanks for watching.